Hello family, welcome to another beautiful edition of Annie Author's channel. If today's your first day watching me, please hit the red button that says subscribe and you will be among the very first people that will be notified whenever I post something new. If you are a returning friend, well, we share, fan or follower, thank you so much. I really, really love you. Alright guys, so today's topic is going to be based on the nutritional values of protein to the human system. Yes, protein is very very important but how important it is to the human system so let's sit back and watch Protein deficiency is known as kwashiorkor. Kwashiorkor is a very rare disease in the Western world, okay? So it's very, very common in Africa and other developing uh, continents, okay? But in the Western world, you can rarely see kwashiorkor. So again, kwashiorkor is the deficiency of protein in our system. So a form of man, it is a form of malnutrition that is caused by deficiency of protein. That's what we call kwashioko. So kwashioko, like I mentioned earlier, is very common in children and also in pregnant women who lack adequate intake of protein, okay? So the only condition where Western world resident can experience protein deficiency is if the patient, that's the person is anorexic, okay? Or the person have some type of cancer or the person have Crohn's disease. Those are the conditions that you will see kwashioko or protein deficiency in the Western world. Deficiency of protein is known as kwashioko. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember this word when I was in elementary school. It was one of the most rampant words people were using, you know, to abuse others. They would say, ah, this person has kwashioko. Back then, we didn't actually know uh, exactly what kwashioko Just playing around it. While some of us were suffering that deficiency, we did not even know much about it. Yes, but it was circulated all over. Yes, but with little knowledge about it. Okay. What are the signs and symptoms of protein deficiency? How do we know that somebody has kwashiorkor? How do we know? Apart from scientific testing, diagnostic testing, how can you and I know that somebody is suffering from kwashiorkor? So there are early signs and symptoms and there are progressive signs and symptoms, okay? So the early signs and symptoms of protein deficiency include irritability, fatigue, weight loss, hair loss, loss of appetite and taste, ear infection, frequent ear infection, lethargic and diarrhea, okay? So when all these things are going on, you should be looking at like, what is wrong with this child? What is this child lacking in his or her body system, okay? The so as these symptoms progresses, you will see that this child's growth is failing, okay? So there will be failure to grow, okay? So you see children of the same age of this particular child that are well fed, that are healthy, are growing while this child is shrinking. This child is shrinking. The hands have become smaller. The legs have become smaller. And the only places in this child's body that is getting bigger and bigger will be the head, the belly, the hands. That's the back of the arms because it's swollen. That is to be the mattress. Then you will see the legs, the feet also will be swollen. That means they are retaining fluid, okay? So this child's belly will be protruding while the actual body is becoming smaller. You can even see the ribs, okay? If this child is breathing, you can even physically see the 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 the, the, the rising of the of the lungs and down and even when you look at the chest closely you can even see the beating okay so that's when you know that things are generally wrong with this child this child is just shrinking getting smaller while the belly is protruding okay and this child is swelling on the arms and the feet and the head is getting bigger the neck is thinner okay something is wrong with this child this child is lacking protein 
so and, and the immune system of this child will be diminished at this time so any infection that is going through uh, that is just passing by in the air or maybe by contact or anything this child will catch it so easily okay because his or her immune system has been weakened by lack of protein okay then as this disease progresses things become more and more complicated yes this child is having so much difficulties so you will see that the stomach will be protruding much more larger than before and the muscles are wasting okay then this child is physically and mentally weak okay even the thought process of this child is no longer in order. Some type of mental retardation will start setting in, okay? This child mentality is not growing with his or her age. Then as time grows on, you find out that every little thing that happens to this child, his or her bones will be breaking because they are not strong. They will just break, okay? Then as time goes on, this child will experience shock, will go into coma, and will eventually die yes protein deficiency can kill especially children easily kill children so that's why it's very important to feed your children well especially protein they need it okay so as time goes on what are the causes of this protein deficiency what causes protein deficiency so as we have already said protein deficiency that means lack of protein causes protein deficiency so if you're not eating enough protein yes you're going to experience kwashoko which is lack of protein so what exactly do we mean this uh, lack of protein in your diet so every cell in the body contains protein so this pro these cells needs protein to repair it as well as make new cells so when your body lack protein, that means the cells in your body are not being repaired. They are not growing. They are not multiplying. So each cell that dies will not have the opportunity to be repaired. And when the cells are not being repaired, guess what? The entire body will start wasting gradually. And at a point, it will fizzle away. Somebody will die. How do we diagnose somebody of protein deficiency? Kwashoko. How do we diagnose somebody? There are so many things the doctor can do for you or your healthcare provider can do to be able to diagnose protein deficiency. So you can as well go back to the signs and symptoms of protein deficiency. That's number one. Then another way of physical examination is to examine your liver and your and uh, the swelling of your liver. That will also give them a signal that something is wrong. Then another one is blood and urine test, okay? To measure the level of protein and sugar in your system another one is cbc complete blood count the doctor will also ask for that they will draw blood and take it to the lab to measure then another one uh is abg that's arterial blood gas the doctor will also they will draw blood from your mainly sometimes it's from your artery so they mainly they go in from here to get some blood then another way is bmp that's basic metabolic panel the doctor will also draw your blood another one is urinalysis they will get uh, your urine and they will take it to the lab to measure then how do we treat protein deficiency how do we treat it so lack of protein you eat protein yes that's the only way to treat it okay so when you lack protein the quickest way to handle it before it gets out of hand is to bombard your system with lots of protein so eat more protein okay so what do i mean by eat, eat more protein you eat food that contains high protein okay so food like seafood eggs lots of egg egg has a egg has a lot of protein lean meat beans peanuts okay all the nuts they contain high level of protein okay then another way is to eat more calorie of food that give energy and carbohydrate and fats okay so all this combination has a lot of protein in them okay then another one is long term vitamin and mineral supplements okay give your kids vitamins give your kids supplements okay this will help them to make up for whatever they did not get from food okay it's very important that kids has 
of kids vitamin to supplement anything they did not get from their regular daily meals. Very, very important parents. So how do we prevent kwashiorkor? How do we prevent protein deficiency? Yes, so according to the dietary guideline from the Institute of Medicine, daily calorie intake of protein are for adults, 10 to 35% daily. For young children, 5 to 20% daily. That means everything you eat should contain 5 to 20% of protein every day. Then for older children and teenagers, Everything they eat in a day should contain about 10 to 30 percent of protein. So basically, you shouldn't eat anything that doesn't contain protein. So whatever you eat, make sure that it has some substantial amount of protein. That will help you to be able to make up that amount of protein your body needs every day. So generalized intake of food that contains protein, such as seafood, you're going to eat a whole lot of them. Egg. So one egg contains about six grams of protein. Just one egg. Okay. I, I recall when we were growing up, you know, they used to tell us that one person sh should not or must not eat one egg. All those things were lies. I think it was, <laughs> it was difficulties and the scarcity that made our parents or adults around us to tell us that, that one person shouldn't finish one egg. That was a lie. Okay. So they used to cut it for us. <laughs> <laughs> they used to cut the egg and they would share it among us and they would deceive us that one person shouldn't eat one egg. You know, we were lacking. We were lacking at that time, okay? So <laughs> one egg a day is very, very important. Then another thing, you eat a whole lot of lean meat, okay? Not be all meat be meat, oh. Lean meat, that means the best part of meat, not the fatty part of meat, not the skin, part of meat, lean meat, that's the best part of it that is close to the muscle areas. Those are the good meat, okay? Then another thing is beans. Beans is very cheap. If not for anything, cook beans for your children. If you can, make sure that they eat beans every day, at least every day. There should be some type of beans in their meal unless you have another source of protein, good meat, good fish, good egg, at least one egg a day. Is very important for your child okay then another thing is peas yes there's something we call ajam or ajama so if you're close to my area you know abreba or hafia ihwa ututu arachuku side of adia state you will know exactly what i mean by ajama or ajam is this a local beans it's very very nutritious so please, if you cannot afford the other type of beans that you buy in the in the market or grocery store, please make sure your kids eat that ajama. It's very, very important for their nutritional value. Very, very good. I'm glad that my mom and grandma used to cook a whole lot of that for us when we were growing up. Then another one, uh, nuts. Yes. If you cannot afford cashew nuts and uh, walnuts and uh, all the other nuts that are out there, they might be expensive, but at least make sure you give your kids granuts, okay? So if your kids are uh, that young, you can blend the granuts. Peanuts is granuts. We call it granuts. But it, make it like a spread on the bread, you know? Don't give your kids just plain bread. That's just carbohydrate all through. Just put a spread of peanut butter on it and that will balance that diet for your children. And again, you, you can also give your children peanuts if they have reached the age of chewing nuts, okay? Be careful for choking hazards. But if they are that young, you can blend it and put it on a spread and make sure they eat it. And if your child is that young also, you can also mix the peanut butter in their custard uh, uh, pap or... Maybe if they're drinking golden mom, you can also take a scoop and mix it or oatmeal, whatever it is. Take a scoop of peanut uh, butter and mix it really good. It's very, very good. And also soya beans. I have seen people use that also to mix in the kids meal. It's very, very good. Very, very. And milk. Please make sure your kids have milk. Very, very important for protein source and growth. Okay. And bone development. 
also other things are seeds you know the fluted pumpkin seeds are very very good high source of protein also so those are good make sure you have them and again like i mentioned milk is very, very important for your children's growth and a good source of protein for your children and also for you your pregnant wife yourself and everybody in the family we all need protein if you have stopped growing but you remember that your cells have not started repairing so you need protein every day of your life just make it an important thing that you have to do for yourself that you have one source and one good source of protein every day of your life at least at least one egg a handful of nuts beans every day at least one source a day will keep you living and healthy thank you so much for watching another beautiful edition of annie's channel and well-being i love you guys i love you love you love you please do not forget to share love like and comment on my videos if you haven't subscribed please do so by hitting the red button i love you bye guys bye guys i love you love you love you love you love you <laughs>